Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm bringing you Hexplore It, The Valley of the Dead King. This game was designed by Justin Mariucci, and it is a very interesting open world game in which you play a character who is powering up to defeat the dead king who wants to destroy everything that you hold dear. At the beginning of Hexplore It, you make two major choices. One is your race, and the other is your role, which is basically like your class. So there are a ton of different races in the game. You can be a fallen one, you can be an orc, a dragonkin, a gray dwarf, an Illumon, hmm, Stonemar, Dryad, Leprechaun. So that's a exclusive, which means that I think it was ex exclusive to the Kickstarter edition. I mean, there's a ton of just different interesting options in here. And every single one has certain stat boosts and a racial ability. So um, choosing your race affects some of the special skills that you have throughout the game and some of your starting statistics. Let's just shuffle up and see what race we'll play this game. Okay, so for this game, we are gonna be a dragon kin. So on each of these cards, let me show you. So each race card is going to tell you what your race is, what your favorite opponent is, so I have an advantage when fighting against creatures with a magical nature. I get two extra health, two extra energy, no boost to attack and defend, but my masteries, which are special skills associated with my role or my job that I'm going to pick, will be boosted. And then I also have extra stats in the navigation, explore, and survival areas, which will help me with movement and quests, which you're going to see. We can also see that I have a special racial ability. So dragon kin are noble and fierce. Why, yes I am. Once per combat for one health and one energy, they may roll the favored opponent die twice and apply the damage to their opponent. Both may explode. So basically I have a special ability where I can pay health and energy in order to roll this die and do some extra damage to an opponent. The other choice I'll need to make is my roll. So this one is the Brute, um, and he has Aggressive Stance and Relentless Strike as special abilities. So basically all of these different roles will have some special abilities that I can use to help me during the game. The other thing that's kind of cool is they have some pretty sweet art on the other side. So if you are the sort of person who likes both flavor text and cool art, this game will definitely satisfy you. This stuff is awesome. So for this game, we're going to go with the Brute, who's just a good standard starter solo type character. Um, but there are a whole lot of interesting roles that you can play in this game. If you're a sorcerer, your special abilities uh, focus on siphoning energy away from your enemies and then repowering yourself. Um, you can be, if you're playing with multiple characters, you can play as a necromancer who uses your ally's health to attack enemies, which is fascinating. Um, there is a beast master who can actually like tame beasts that you encounter um, on your adventures and add them to their pack. There are a whole lot of cool things that you can do as an adventurer in this game. But for now, we're gonna stick with the brute. So as you might have noticed, this is a blank board. And that is because one of the big sort of interesting quirks of this game, and I like it, is that you fill out your whiteboard each time with the stats that, um, that your character will have for that game. So, hmm, what will we name our brute? Our dragonkin brute. Let's call him Dova, like the Dovahkiin. And his favorite opponent and we're gonna get right off the race card. So it's magical nature. Then we can actually go through and like check out his stats. So starting health for a brute is eight, but he gets plus two. So my starting health is gonna be 10. Uh, starting energy here is four, but I get plus two energy, so it will be six. Then you can go over here. I don't get any attack or defense bonuses. So it's just gonna be three and two. The standards are printed right here. Aggressive stance, my first mastery is going to get a plus two. And my um, defense, my second mastery, relentless strike is going to be, have a starter value of one, but it gets a plus one. So that's a two. I get one, one, and two on these uh, navigation, explore, and survival skills but I'm gonna get a plus one here, so it'll be two. 
a plus one here for two, and a plus one here for three. I also have a food rating of three, and this is gonna affect me because I need to feed myself every turn. So we'll put my food rating right here. So at the beginning of the game, you start with your food rating times two or two days worth of supplies. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on this card. And since it's a one player game, for a one or two player game, each character starts with 24 gold. So that's my starting amount of gold. So we are going to work from there. Also, my current health is a 10 and my current energy is a six, but that could change, will change in the very near future. So it's good that we're using these handy little whiteboard markers that come in the box. So when you set up your very first map, this is what the game is basically going to look like. You have the main A, B, C, and D tiles, and these can actually be arranged any way you want once you're an experienced player, but this is the recommended starting setup. Um, as you can see at the bottom, there's a little bar for quest cards. Up here, there's a bar for circumstances cards, and I'm gonna show you how all of that works shortly. But for now, you basically just have these map tiles that fit together like so, and that's your starting map. You can actually expand by going off the map in various directions. There are further hexes that we can add and probably will add as the game goes on. If you want some inspiration for fresh map setups, here's Akalon's Guide to the Valley. So basically Akalon is someone who's lived in the valley for a long time and has lots of suggested configurations that use some of the smaller little hex pieces to create more elaborate and interesting maps. So once you get used to playing this game in its most basic way, you can actually combine the map tiles in a whole lot of different ways in order to create new landscapes for yourself and for your heroes. So setting up your cards is pretty easy. The game comes with these really handy deck boxes. Uh, if you're a sleever, they're gonna drive you crazy because they fit on sleeve cards really tightly, but otherwise they're very useful. So here's the quest bar. I'm gonna shuffle this and lay out my first quest cards and show you how that works. So here's my filled out quest bar with all the initial quests that I've laid out for this game. So as you can see, they're bordered with these different colors. That is because the survival um, quest will use my blue die, a green navigate quest will use my green navigate die, and then these um, quests do something a little bit different. The other thing that you can do once you draw your quest cards is mark where they are on the map. So for example, I want to place this survival quest. Let's zoom in for you. Here we go. So, we know that a group of elders are studying the river here. It seems the water's been tainted by something dead or undead. Investigate the river. So the river that you're gonna investigate is on the C quadrant, and it will be a tile that looks just like this, such as perhaps that tile right there. See how they match? So you'll put a little quest marker right here to mark that you should go there. So now you can see that I've set three quest markers on the map. The reason there's only three, even though there are five quests, is that these two quests, this one is on tile H, this one's on tile N, and I haven't discovered those yet. So in order to complete these quests, I'm gonna need to find those tiles. So when I explore, I'll be drawing off of this sort of deck of shuffled up tiles. I don't actually know what I'll find. So some quests may or may not happen in this game, depending on your luck. For this bar up here, I'm gonna be drawing circumstance cards, which have an exclamation point in the back. So they are also cards that I can have to deal with during the game, usually during travel. And they take different forms. So these are combat events, which are actually great if I want to get some stat boosts and power-ups, but these are events that can just be sort of terrible. So we'll see how that ends up going. The other deck I'll put up is power-up cards with the plus sign on them. When we get to draw these, good things happen, as you will soon see. So the first thing I'm going to do is roll to see what my starting city is for my adventurers. So we are going to start in city number three. And that is where we'll do our initial purchases, any upgrades that we want to do. We start right here. So as this handy reference card that comes with the game will tell you, cities are a pretty great place to be. If I were feeling a little bit beat up, I can skip the circumstance phase on a city. 
Uh, my group can choose to pay one gold to heal all lost health and energy while in a city. So if I'm really in trouble, I can try to get back. Heroes may purchase gear upgrades and items from the marketplace while in a city. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And the group may turn in all completed quests here. So every quest I complete, I hang on to that card until I get to a city, turn in the quest, and then accept the reward for doing it. So right now we're in city number three. Every city has a little bit of a personality and a special item that you can buy for less in that city. So here we're at the Rock Toe Encampment, led by the Orcish Shaman Dregnak. The Orcs are a complicated people. They are resilient and attuned to the spirits of the land. You may purchase handy elixirs for two gold here. So the back of the city card tells you about the market. So normally a handy elixir costs three gold, but because I'm in this particular city, it's only gonna cost me two. And it gives me some regenerative powers. So things that you can buy in the city, you can get rations, potions that heal three health and energy, luck stones that allow you to re-roll if a roll goes badly. It's a good thing to have. A handy elixir we just talked about. Camping gear, which lets you heal one health and one energy before the movement phase of each game turn. So it's basically like a constant little health boost, which I really like to have. An exotic map, what that means is you're basically paying some gold to add another tile to your map without having to explore there first. Climbing gear allows us to go into the mountains. So one of our quests is actually in the mountains and we are going to need a climbing gear to get there. Folding boat allows you to travel over water. Reliable mounts increase the range of movement that you have that's considered cautious movement where you don't necessarily have to face a circumstance if you don't want to. And then fortification plans. For endgame, these are really important because it basically allows you to build a fort that gives you some bonus damage possibilities against the dead king, who is of course the enemy we are preparing to destroy during this game. So the first thing I wanna buy is some rations. My food rating is a three, which means that I need to, cons I need to consume three food every day or else I'm gonna starve and that has some bad effects on my abilities to progress. So one ration, is worth two units of food. And I would like to buy three of those so I can have another couple days of food. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That puts me up to 12 food. And now the 21 gold. So let's see what else I might like to purchase. So here I've decided to buy two potions, two luck stones, the camping gear, and the climbing gear. Uh, depending on where your initial quests are, you may want to wait on the climbing gear, but I now have 11 gold left and I still have a hole in my pocket. But rather than buy more items, I'm going to show you how another facet of this game works, which is that a lot of these tiles have little rings around them of numbers. Those are equipment upgrades. So I can essentially pay these amounts of gold in order to increase that stat by one. So if I wanted to bring my energy up, I could pay two gold the first time, three gold the second time, four, five, six, seven, in order to increase that stat. And you just mark it off by coloring this area in on your hex so you know what the next level is. So as you can see, I decided to adjust my health and my energy up by one, my survival skill up by one, my aggressive stance skill up by one, and that was all my money. So I now have no money, I guess I better go and earn some. It's time to start moving. So one thing that's great about Hexplorer is that it comes with all these handy references. So here's an entire walk through a game, a game turn. So the first thing you do is you move. So camping is basically staying in place. I can move cautiously, which means that I can move along a road. I can move normally, so I can begin moving at a rate of four hexes per turn. Reckless allows me to move two hexes further than normal, um, but I lose two energy and, um, and I can end up wandering, which is really bad. Then we'll do a skill check and I'll talk about that when we get there. But the first thing I wanna do is move. So the first thing I wanna do is head towards this quest marker, but I don't necessarily wanna move recklessly just yet, especially because I know that this quest is gonna ask for my navigate skill, which is pretty crap right now. So we're just gonna move cautiously and see, like work through a turn, maybe see if I can get a combat or something that'll increase my power a little bit on the way. So let's move one, two, three. So since we're moving along a road, this counts as moving cautiously. Cautiously is either moving one hex space or moving your entire move along a road. So this is 
considered cautious movement. And what that means is that if I get a circumstance I don't like, I don't have to confront it this turn. So let's see what happens. So when you move, the next phase is your skill phase. And that means that you're gonna roll these three dice. The navigate die, I do not technically have to roll this turn because if you move cautiously, you don't have any problems with getting lost. If you move recklessly or even normally, you have to roll your navigate die because it determines whether you wander. So if I roll it and I get a seven, which is above my stat of two, I would need to get a two or a hex in order to pass. My team is gonna wander. And what that means is that I will also have to roll this die and figure out which direction we get blown off course in. Because basically the idea is that if you don't really know where you're going and you're not moving cautiously, you just kind of end up lost in the woods unless you're following a road like I'm doing right now. But for this turn, no big deal. You also roll this yellow die. This is your explore die. Roll it. Sadly, I got an eight. Again, my stat was only a two. I needed to get a two or less in order to pick up some more gold. So you can actually like find gold in your location if you do well with these rolls. And then the last one, which is why I bothered to pump up this stat, is called your survival roll. If I roll a four or less on this blue die, I don't have to consume any of my food rations, which means that I'm just doing better in terms of not having to buy more food and not having to worry about it. Sadly, I rolled a 10. That's a critical fail. I got real hungry. So I'm gonna have to take off three of my food, which puts me down to nine food. So now that I've handled my actual movement and my skill check, the next thing I'm going to do is roll for a circumstance. So I'm gonna roll this six sided die and I get a five. So what that means is I'm gonna grab the circumstance card that is on space number five. Kobolds, monstrous humanoids. So they have a health of four, an energy of six, and I'll get three gold for defeating them. So you know what? Let's fight these kobolds. I'm gonna show you how combat works. So before we get in a little scuffle with these kobolds, I wanna show you one more bit of bookkeeping in this game, and it's really the last bit. So this is the battle mat. It is a lot more complicated. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. All it does is serve as a little tracker for you to keep track of what you have. So I know that right now my hero movement is four maximum, one if I'm being cautious, simple. Here are the group purchases. So I bought climbing gear, so I've just checked that box off. As I buy more things or acquire more things, I will check that off. I would really like to find a stave of dragons at some point. I haven't been that lucky yet. Um, if I've acquired talismans from shrines, I can mark off which talisman I have from which shrine. Talismans are used to reclaim cities the dead king has taken from you. And then um, blessings will be blessings that I have gotten from the shrines. So they are permanent boosts that you have, so it's good to know. If you're doing an escort mission, you write your escort stats here. And the dead king's movements grow depending on how many cities he's conquered. So this is just a place to keep track of that. This is just a place to do your damage math in the middle of the board. So this is what we're gonna be actively using for our little fight with the kobolds. Ah, also, if you feel like making your game a more punishing experience, you can up the difficulty level. That's an activity that is done out of combat. And fair warning, once you have increased your difficulty, the rules technically are that you can't go back down if it gets a little too hot for you. So I'm gonna stick with the starter difficulty, but some of you will eventually be going to epic, I'm sure. So in combat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this kobold's current health, which is four, and his current energy, which is six. So that way I can keep track of what my actual numbers are. Hopefully we're gonna be able to take them out pretty easy, but you never know. So in combat, actions are declared simultaneously. So I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do, then I'm gonna roll for what he's gonna do. But I actually have to pick before I know what he's up to because that's part of the challenge of the game. So I'm gonna choose an action. My brutal assault isn't quite strong enough to take him out in one hit. So I'm gonna try for this aggressive stance. And what that means is that aggressive stance says this mastery deals damage equal to aggressive stance rank, which is four, plus brutal assault rank, which is three. This damage is difficult to defend against. If your defender defends, defends roll a die, but he doesn't have any defense actions, so that's not gonna be an issue. Um, so basically, there's some special 
rules. But the other thing is that this, um, once I hit rank seven on this, my damage will always be piercing damage, which means that it can't be defended against when I'm using this particular skill. For now, we're not that high yet, but we're gonna attack him for seven. The other option that I do have, and we're gonna spend one energy to do that because there's the energy cost right here. So you have six energy. So the other thing I could do is I could choose to spend one more energy because when you're playing with one single hero, um, normally I have to choose to attack, use a mastery or guard. Um, but when you're playing by yourself because you're the only one involved, you can spend an energy to also defend at half rank. So I could spend one energy to defend for one, but I don't really think that that's worth it in this particular battle. So I'm not going to, I'm gonna keep my energy. So that's what I've decided to do. I'm gonna go with him for seven. Now this Kobold is gonna roll. No, so he rolled a hex. So what this is gonna mean is it's a single target health attack. Roll a 10 sided die. Each hero loses food equal to the result rolled. So not only is this bastard hitting me for three, uh, but he is taking some of my food away. So now let's see how much of my food he's gonna take. All right, so he's taking three food from me. That sucks. So now I'm down to six food. Bummer. Okay, so that also brings me down three health. So I'm at eight. The good news, however, is that my attack also went through and just totally wasted him. So he didn't do any defense actions. The seven is like obviously bigger than four. So he is dead. Goodbye, Kabul. Catch you later or not. So this circumstance is resolved. I'm gonna put a new circumstance card in the spot that it vacated. Ooh, the four giantesses of the Paliquid Man. Once I can get this, this is cool. This is some sort of relic. So I'm gonna kind of hope to roll that on future circumstances. So the battle mat is done for now. And we can go back to normal stuff. So I was right here. My vitals are down a little bit. My turn is not over. There's one more thing I have to do. So I've resolved my circumstance. I have one thing left. And that thing is to roll and see if the dead king is going to show up. So his likelihood of arriving on the scene goes up with every turn of the game. This first time, I just need to roll anything that is not a hex. So this die goes from one, two, three, four, five, Hex. If I roll a hex, he appears. If I roll anything less this time, he won't. Next turn it'll be, is it a hex or a five? Next turn it'll be hex five, four. So basically the odds of him coming get bigger every time. It's a two. So fortunately we don't have to deal with our little friend, the dead king, this particular turn. He's not here yet. And that is a complete turn of hex support. So now we're gonna begin our second turn, which is actually good because remember I have this camping gear? That means that my health and energy each go up by one. So I'm back up to nine and seven. I'm glad I bought that. So it is in pretty good spirits that I will venture towards this quest. So I have done my movement phase. Now I still need to roll dice. My navigate die doesn't matter because I'm not gonna wander on this turn. I do however still need to roll for food and gold. So let's see how I do. Okay, so this is actually good because this two is underneath my um, survival stat of four. So what that means is that I don't have to find food this turn. So that's great. Um, I do not, however, find any gold on my scavenging. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys, my reward for defeating the kobolds was three gold. So I do have three. Yay, money. So now I can roll for a circumstance, but I don't have to do it if I don't want to. Okay, so this is a hex. What that means is that I had five slots for cards up here. I'll just draw a circumstance off the top of the deck. Pleasant weather. The weather is comfortable and you're making it easy. You're moving easier because of it. This card supersedes other ongoing nature circumstances. The group gains a negative two bonus to navigate rolls during the skill phase and may move one extra hex per turn. 
This condition remains for four game turns. So since I did not have to do this circumstance because I moved cautiously, I'm actually just gonna ditch it. I don't really wanna deal with the navigate issues. So this is just gonna go in the discard pile and I don't have to worry about it at all because when you have moved cautiously, the circumstance is optional. So now I've done my skill roll. I rolled for my circumstance. Now we are free to work on this quest. So this is gonna be a navigate quest. The troll moot needs living crystal to build wards against the bone legion. That's the dead king's army. They've located a site hidden in the mountains, but harvesting it can be tricky. Accompany them and learn to harvest the crystal. If you have an orc, dwarf, troll, or stone mar in the group, which I don't, you also get an extra bonus. But since I am dragonkin, I do not get that particular bonus this time. I will, however, give this a shot. So I need to roll my navigate die. One success is required. My success odds are not great. Given that my stat is two, I need to roll a two or a hex in order to succeed. So let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> I got lucky. All right, so this navigate quest has been successful. So what that means is that, um, I mean, I've learned to harvest the crystal. It's just a little story element. But what's really going to happen is I'm going to turn this over and put it back on the quest bar until it can hit up another city and turn in my quest, which is going to be soon because I'm like two feet from a city. So now that my quest is up, we need to roll to see if the dead king is going to arrive. He needs a five or a hex this time to do it. A four. Okay, so we get one more turn at least without his nasty little presence on our board. So now that our quest is over, I want to start moving back to this city, but I want to do it cautiously because some of these circumstances are pretty brutal and I want to burn through them and see if I can get some that I like or roll one of the ones that I want. So let's see how that goes. Let's just move one. Also, by the way, I camped. So that means that my health went up again to 10. Okay, so now I'm here. Let's roll. So I don't need to worry about my nav die, but let's see if I can roll something good on food and gold. Ooh, bad roll. Okay, so I do have to spend three food. Fortunately, I'm headed back to a city so I can deal with this to an extent because I'm down to three food. And then um, I do not find any gold either. So that stinks. Okay, so now I'll roll for a circumstance. And I've rolled a five. All right, so let's see what this cool little artifact looking thing is. Okay, the four giantesses of the palanquin man. You've unearthed what appears to be a mysterious relic, a small figurine of four female giants carrying a shrouded palanquin. This image has been found in many ruined places around the world, and yet not even the wisest sages can pinpoint its origin. When held in the palm of one's hand, one is granted limited foreknowledge of your enemy's intentions. Roll the opponent die during the declaration phase of combat to foretell how your opponent will act. Ooh, cool. In doing so, one of the four giants is reduced to dust. This item can be used up to four times. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I'm really glad that I acquired this. I'm glad I stopped for this circumstance. So we'll replace that circumstance card. Something unpleasant, so let's see. We'll put it there. And now we'll roll to see if our buddy the dead king is coming. He is not coming. Yay! He needs a that's like that he needed to get a four, five, or a six that time. So his 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 arrival is inevitable, but we're enjoying this peaceful time before he comes. So now I'm just gonna move into this city. It's a cautious movement, so my navigation diet is not that important. Let's see if I find any gold. Okay, so this was a really good roll. So I rolled a three. Now, sadly, it's still a too high for my stat. I'm not finding any gold. I should probably update that stat soon. I did, however, roll a two, which means that I do not have to consume my food. So that's a good thing. Now let's roll and see what kind of circumstance I get. Four. Okay, so four was event annoying commoner. You saved a wandering commoner from certain death and now they won't leave you alone. This group suffers plus one to all skill roll results while the annoying commoner remains in the group. This affects any skill roll. Ew. The commoner becomes a target in combat and defense each turn. Keep this card until you return to a city. So fortunately I'm in a city and I don't actually have to keep this at all. So I'm just gonna discard it and get 
a new thing. Ooh, a lesser water elemental. Let's go fight it later. Cool. So now I'm in a city. My, I've done my movement, I've done my skill, I've done my circumstance, and then you have an event. So, <clears throat> let's see. I can spend my gold, turn in complete a quest, and pay one gold to heal completely. I can spend one gold, earn a blessing, turn in a single quest, and heal completely. Okay, so basically you get little events everywhere you are. In a city, I can shop. So, what do I want to buy? I only have three gold. I need some food. So, it's... unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to spend most of my money eating, which is not that interesting. But, um, because I'd really like to upgrade a stat, but that's just not going to happen. So, I'm going to spend all my gold to make sure that I have food to eat, because not having food stinks. So, we'll go up six food back up to nine. So I have three days of travel worth of food. So if I have some bad rolls or some food spoilage, I'll be okay. Um, I'm also back up to full health from the camping, so I didn't need to pay anything to heal. Now I get to turn on my quest. Ta-da! And I'm going to get to draw my first power card. So let's hope it's a good one. Energy. So this is an energy plus one. So basically I just add one to my total and current energy bringing me up from seven energy to eight. Nice. And there are other power-up cards that do different things as you go. I will also get to draw a new quest. Ooh, Invasion at Restwind Dale. And place it on the, on the map. So hopefully, no good thing is this is in Quadrant C. This is already out. I don't have to explore anything new to get to it. So. I can select the first encounter I find when I get there and just fight it. Awesome. Okay, so I definitely want to do this. Um, it is in quadrant C and it's on, oh, it's on this city. So I can just go ahead and head in this direction and then I'll already be in a city where I can turn my new quest in. Perfect. So that's the end of this turn and now I'm gonna have to roll to see if the dead king shows up. He does. This is some bad news, people. It's time for our enemy to arrive on the board, and that means that things get a lot more tense, and I'm gonna need to speed up my leveling and my progress to try to deal with it. So I'm actually in kind of a tense spot with this, because I'm gonna roll for the dead king and find out which city he lands on. I'm on a city. If I roll a four, he's gonna show up, fight me, and I don't actually have any kind of skill that I would need to survive this, so I would immediately die. So let's just really hope that I don't roll four, shall we? All right, so he's rolled a three. That means that he is going to be here. This city is now fallen. And he's on the board. Next turn, he's gonna select a new city to target and start moving towards it. At first, his movement's a little bit slow. He moves the number of fallen cities that he has. So right now, it's he moves one because it, it's zero movement plus one per fallen city. So he will move one, 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 and then once he gets another city, it'll be two. So he doesn't actually target the heroes at first, he targets cities. And so the next turn we're gonna roll to figure out where he decides he's going. So I'm just gonna take a couple more turns to give you a sense of how he moves, and then I will set you up to discover this game on your own. Um, but I'm going to move four hexes this way. One, two, three, I don't want to move on to this tile because I don't want to fight a boss. But I'm going to move towards this city and then towards this quest. Just try to like complete what's going on down here. It seems like a good choice. Actually, four. let's go this way. Two, three, four. That way I can head into this city for next turn. That's much more efficient. Okay, so now I'm going to have to roll my navigation die. And this is potentially pretty dangerous because I do not want to get maneuvered onto this boss tile because then I would have to fight it and that would really suck. But we're willing dangerously, you know, it's a sample game. So let's roll my nav die and see how I did. My navigation stat is only a two. So my odds of wandering are pretty high. And so I'm wandering. Okay, so I have rolled a five. And what that means is that I'm going to have to um, roll the six sided die to figure out which direction I'm going to wander in. So basically this helpful little marker is going to tell me. So let's roll. I rolled a two. That means that I'm going to wander back here. 
So I have wandered a little bit and I didn't quite go in the direction that I was wanting to. So that stinks, I got a little lost. It'll take us longer to get where we're going. Now I'm gonna roll my other dice and see how it goes. Ooh, excellent. I rolled a uh, critical success on this. I do not have to spend any food. Excellent. Sadly, I rolled a five here and I'm still not finding any gold. I would recommend that at the start of the next game, I put some stats into health and energy. I think maybe next time I'd rather put them into these stats because they actually play such a big role. So you learn by doing, right? So that is my movement, my skills, and now it's time to roll for a circumstance. Four. Okay, so let's pull these lesser water elemental guys. So I'm gonna have to fight. That's okay. We'll pop out our handy dandy battle mat and we'll get down to business. I do get some gold award for beating them, so I can't say that it makes me too sad to run into them. So their energy is six. No, their health is six. Their energy is eight. I don't really want to use my four giantesses yet, but what I am going to do is see these like handy little turn markers around the sides. I'm going to go ahead and mark these and put four G's. So that way I know that I'm tracking my relics. So when I do use it, I can mark off the times that it have been used on the battle map, which is actually really handy. But for now, we're gonna be fighting against the Kabolts. Also, we can now put in the Dead King's movement, which is currently zero plus one, because he's got one city. All right, so our first thing that we're gonna to have to do is declare. What attack would we like to use on this lesser water elemental? All right, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and use my aggressive stance again. It's a really handy mastery and it only costs me one energy. So I'm gonna go down to seven energy, but it's gonna mean I'm gonna put in an attack against this dude that is seven. Also, there's something that I forgot to do last time. The brute treats each opponent as a favored opponent while using the aggressive stance. What a favored opponent is, is if this lesser water elemental said magical nature instead of spirit, it would be my favorite opponent. But in this case, it isn't, except that I'm using aggressive stance so I can pretend that it is. And when you have a favored opponent, what you do is you roll this die and it does a certain amount of unblockable damage to that enemy. So let's just roll and see what happens. So I just got a one, but it's basically just a plus one of damage. Actually, you put it down here because it can't be blocked. So this is damage that, I can, that can be blocked theoretically. This is damage that can't. So I have a total of eight damage coming in. One of it can't be blocked at all. So let's roll to see what our little kobold friend is gonna try to do. Sorry, our lesser water elemental friend is gonna try to do. All right, let's do a roll. Okay, we got a three. Um, <clears throat> that is gonna be piercing one damage right in my eye. Ah, okay, so we are gonna take one piercing damage that we couldn't block even if we had bothered to defend. So our health is down to 10. That's okay, because we are just about to whack him for eight, which means that he died. So this lesser water elemental is dead. We can just go ahead and clear off that part of the battle mat. Gone. We're gonna draw a new circumstance, another thing to fight, a spirit, which is my favorite enemy, so that's cool. And then we will move the battle mat out of the way and give ourselves our reward, which was, according to that card, four gold. Sometimes you get power up cards, which would be even better, but I'm not seeing that yet. So, four gold. It's more than I had when I started. So that was the circumstance resolved. There's not gonna be any event that happens here. So now it's gonna be time to move the dead king. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this die to figure out which city he's gonna target. All right, so he's gonna target city number one. That means that I need to put this targeting token right here on the city. And starting next turn, he's gonna move one towards it. That's actually pretty good for me because it gives me a lot of time to move around and power up before he even takes one more city. But after that, he'll move two. After that, he'll move three. So he just gets faster and scarier as the game goes on. 
So I'm actually gonna end my sample game here because I feel like this game is best played by you. The exploration aspect of this is what makes it really fun. And there are a whole lot of different cards and power-ups that you'll see and experience, a whole lot of different character combinations that you can try that make Hexplore it a pretty good time. So if you like what you see here, I have great news for you, which is that I'm doing a giveaway on my channel for this game. And there will be details for how to enter in a link beneath this video. So get clicking, hopefully you win, and then you can enjoy playing this game with me. Happy gaming.